Should the 49ers trade Brandon Ayuk? That's right, the wide receiver for the 49ers uh, did not request a trade, but there's a lot of speculation, maybe some phone calls into the 49ers about maybe he is he available. Uh, we do know the Steelers have made a call, at least to some degree, inquiring about Brandon Ayuk's availability. Uh, Brandon Ayuk had 1,342 yards this year, seven touchdowns. He was the lead receiver for the San Francisco 49ers. He's 26 years old, and uh, he's up on his fifth-year option this year. Supposedly, you know, uh, there's some stuff. He's not following the 49ers anymore on Instagram. Uh, he wants a contract. He wants a new deal. They want a puppy. But in the end, I think a deal gets done between them. Here's why. First off, Brandon Ayuk is 26 years old. He is the youngest of their pass catchers by about two or three years, give or take. I think he's about two years younger than uh, Debo Samuel, who's 28, who just turned 28 this year. Christian McCaffrey's turning 28 this year in June. George Kittle is 30, going to be 31 in October. So, I think that the future of your franchise, the future of your receiving core is in Brandon Ayuk. Uh, if you look at all three of those contracts with Kittle, CMC, and Debo, they all actually end after 2025. So you only really have two more years with all three of those guys on the roster. I almost can guarantee you at least one of those guys is gone after 2025 and maybe two out of the three because when you look at the, the dead cap money on them, George Kittle has the highest dead cap for void years. Void years are when you put dummy years on the back end of a contract. That's why, you know, the Kittle, you know, he's going to be $13.5 million in dead cap in 2026. Debo's going to be $8.5 million in 2026. And Christian McCaffrey's going to be $4.5 million in 2026 as all those dead cap. But also all those players will be over 30 at the time. Meanwhile, Ayuk will be 28. And so if you extend Ayuk now, his contract right now is probably going to be 26, 27, maybe $28 million a year. But you're not paying all that right now. That's APY. That's the average. You know, that, that comes down to how much are you really guaranteeing out of that contract. And the new contract doesn't really kick in until next year. Which, again, you have Brock Purdy currently on a rookie contract. He's, you know, you got two more years of cost control over Brock Purdy. And probably by the time that the real contract kicks in for Ayuk, you're really going to be then looking about, hey, like, how do we handle Christian McCaffrey's exit? Is he going to just walk to free agency and be a four and a half million dollar dead cap hit. You know, are we going to extend Debo Samuel, who's had a lot of injuries? Are we going to extend George Kittle? Maybe because he's a tight end, and the contracts for those tend to be a little bit lower. Uh, you know, as far as salary cap goes and percentage of salary cap goes. So I think they probably keep Kittle for the long term and maybe move on from Debo and Christian McCaffrey in 2026. But now that here becomes a question of okay, but. Why not trade away Brandon Ayuk, right? Like, I get that he's 26, but you have these good players. Uh, you know, I, I personally, I'm of the opinion you keep Brandon Ayuk, but you also have the dark shadow of the A.J. Brown trade. Uh, you know, you look at you know, the Titans, they had traded away uh, A.J. Brown. They drafted Traylon Burks as a replacement with that first-round pick, and it really hasn't worked out for them. You look over at, you know, the Raiders when they trade away Amari Cooper, what – came out of that because like again if you're trading away players even if you get a first round pick and that's really the only real reason I could see them trading away Brandon Ayuk is if they get I think more than a first round pick first round pick plus it, you know that's the only way I could see the value coming out of it for the 49ers because right now they have this guy under great cost control still 15 million dollars for this year you know the franchise tag for next year and they also, you know, the 49ers, this exact same administration for the 49ers did the similar thing with DeForest Buckner. They traded him to the Colts, and then they went ahead and with that pick uh, drafted Javon Kinlaw, and it didn't work out. It wasn't a one-for-one -one comp, but it did give them a little bit more, you know, money flexibility as far as what they were able to spend, you know, for and how they were able to replace that player. It wasn't just a one-for-one -one thing. You now had money to spend on other players as well, and that's kind of where the – it becomes a cost-benefit scenario of how are you using these assets and what assets can you now use in addition to, you know, like, again, you get both the freedom of having extra money and a first-round pick and what that gets you. And that, that's kind of like there's a little bit more availability of talent out of all that. And that, that's why I understand it. 
but we haven't seen a lot of teams pull it off very well. I, I think you can. Like, you know, it, it's happened. We saw the Ravens straight away Hollywood Brown, and, you know, they've managed to kind of, you know, build up their roster over the last two years after moving on from Hollywood Brown. Uh, you know, the trade compensation, though, I think would have to be pretty significant for the, the 49ers for them to move off of Brandon Ayuk. Like I said, because he is young. He is two years younger than, you know, the other three members of that receiving core. He was their best pass catcher this year. He has been a significant part of them being able to move the offense downfield. He has great chemistry with Brock Purdy. And, you know, again, I think he's a very good player, a downfield threat. I think that's also why you're going to get a lot of phone calls about him. He, he's a good player, and teams want to trade for good players. I, I I still am of the opinion, though, that the 49ers keep him. Like, if I'm saying right now, you know, you're going to put money down tomorrow, and I'll probably end up losing the bet because I always suck at these kind of things, I would put money on Ayuk sticking around. He, They don't really have another young player to go there. Maybe they draft somebody, but now you got to draft and develop somebody. They just spent the time and money and effort developing Brandon Ayuk. That's what they just did. They just spent three, four years developing Brandon Ayuk. It took two and a half years for Ayuk to become a significant contributor in that offense. And there was a point where people thought he might not be on that team anymore. And then he had some chemistry with some of the quarterbacks and ended up working out. But, uh, you know, I, I think the way it looks right now, I, I, if I'm Shanahan, I don't want to move off of that guy. I want to move off the older dudes. I want to keep the young guy in the building. That being said, sometimes people, you know, come up to you with an offer you can't refuse. You look right now, and we, you know, we got the trade options. Who are their potential partners? The number one, I, you know, we know about is the Steelers did call. This is according to Benjamin Albright on Twitter. Uh, he's really more of a Broncos guy, but he has a lot of good connections in the NFL. You know, the Steelers have picked 20, 51, 84, 98, and 119. They also have about $12 million in cap space, so they could be a very good candidate. Uh, you know, they don't have a downfield threat really much on the roster other than George Pickens. They don't really have a true number one on that roster right now. They moved on from Deontay Johnson. They traded him to the Carolina Panthers. I think they could definitely use a guy to come in there. You know, the, I think the, the rumor was, hey, we're going to pair Ayuk with Russell Wilson. I think Ayuk would work really well with a guy like Justin Fields as well, a good route runner, dude with, you know, good length. And, I, again, I think what Ayuk does well is a downfield threat with good, you know, ball skills and good route running, who they, again, developed over the last three years. Wasn't Did not come into the NFL like this. This guy became a good player in the NFL. He was coming in as a talented dude and, and is now a really talented dude. And so, you know, I get why teams are calling about him if he's available. Steelers, I think this would make their offense seem kind of very uh, valuable. Like, I, at least it would give something to their offense where you go, oh, my God, they actually can move the ball maybe. Um, a downfield threat in Ayuk to go along with, you know, they have Fryermuth and Darnell Washington at tight end. They have uh, Pickens and Calvin Austin. Maybe they draft to do this year depending on what picks they trade away. You know, I, I could see this working out for the Steelers if they do it. They also kind of need to fix their offensive line situation. But, you know, I think especially I think Ayuk would work really well with somebody like Justin Fields who kind of needs to see it and then rip it. I, I think there's other options, though. The, the Patriots are obviously going to be the other team that gets talked about a lot for this because uh, they missed out on Calvin Ridley. They were in the market for Calvin Ridley. It didn't work out. Uh, they also have picked 34. 68, 103, 137. I don't think they're going to be trading pick three for Brandon Ayuk, although we're going to talk about a scenario later where one of the top uh, 10 teams maybe trades out of their pick and accumulates draft capital and maybe trades for Brandon Ayuk, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I think the Patriots, you know, if you're drafting a quarterback at three, whether it's Drake May, Jaden Daniels, or uh, J.J. McCarthy, I think, uh, you know, pick 34 might be up for grabs to go ahead and trade for a wide receiver. And I think that would be a very smart thing to package 34 and, you know, maybe 34 and 68 or 34 and maybe a third rounder next year and 103 this year to go get Brandon Ayuk. You trade a, a package of picks that are the equivalent of a one plus maybe a third next year. And that, that gives you a downfield threat, especially if you're drafting a guy like Drake May who – Hey man, like he's a you know he can rip it and throw it down the field. You give him a good number one. Even Jaden Daniels, I think this would be a perfect match for him. I think a lot of quarterbacks would really like you know if you're a rookie quarterback, you want to give them somebody who is a talented wide receiving option. We know Ayuk is a talented wide receiving option in the NFL. So instead of trying to develop your quarterback with a rookie wide receiver, 
you're giving him a talented veteran wide receiver that you can extend and keep there and kind of build a relationship with. So Patriots absolutely should be on the table for trading for him. I don't know if it gets done. You know, they missed out on Calvin uh, Calvin Ridley. Uh, I think that, you know, we, we don't even know what's going to end up happening by the time the draft comes around. But I think pick 34 should definitely be on the table for possibly trading for Brandon Ayuk, plus some other picks as well, because I think Ayuk, I think for the, the Niners to trade away Ayuk, it has to be like a really strong offer. The other option, you know, a lot of people are going to talk about the Buffalo Bills. They just trade away Stephon Diggs. That might be a little tighter. You know, they have to get pretty uh, creative as far as their cap space goes, because their effective cap space right now is $131,000, which is not a lot. Um, there's, you know, the only money they can really restructure right now is Milano's money, and they might not want to do that for the moment. Uh, they get some money back when they go ahead and get to, you know, June 1st and Trey White's deal comes off the books. They do a pick 28 and 60, plus they have Minnesota's second round pick next year to go along with the rest of their picks. So they do have the draft capital and maybe you can offer some of this draft capital to say, Hey, like maybe we trade you our first and like two second rounders next year and, you eat, you know, 49ers, you turn this into a, a signing bonus or a roster bonus and you eat some of this money for us. And that that might be the one way to get around it. And then you can sign him to an extension and that kind of can finagle the money a little bit more once he's on your roster. So I think there's some op- options here. I think, uh, you know, like I said, I, I think for Buffalo, I think it's just very tight. They've been trying to, you know, free up some money. Uh, I know they've been looking at receivers in this draft. I, I'm very curious to see if that works out. I, you know, I, I think the, the, the matchup is perfect. Like, you give Brandon Ayuk to Josh Allen, you give him a downfield, long, you know, again, ball skill threat that, you know, is a great route runner. I Again, I think that Ayuk's going to work on whatever team he ends up going to. So, it, it's a smart move. And then I think what you end up getting, one of the things that you have to ask yourself is, okay, but so now the 49ers have to do basically what the Titans did where they draft a wide receiver in the first round at pick, what, 28? At pick you know, 34, pick 20 if the Steelers do this maneuver. Is that worth it for the, uh, for, for the 49ers? Is that one-for-one one going to be a good replacement? I don't think so, but if you like one of the top three receivers in this draft class, we've heard a lot of talk about those top uh, teams in the top 10 possibly trading out. The Falcons, because they need to fix some of their defensive issues. And there's you know while there's some good defensive players in this draft, there's probably not a lot going in the top 10 might be one, and maybe that's just to the Falcons. So the Falcons are like, listen, we're down for some defensive players in this draft class. Somebody come up here. Come on, you want some receiving help? Come up. Get the oh, Dunes. Get neighbors. They fell. Come get this guy. Get Bowers. So I could see there's a possibility where if you're up in that top 10 range and you're the Bears who don't have a second-round pick and are going to have a, a long time between you know almost 60 picks before they pick again you know, from nine to the next pick, there's some real reasons for the you know the Bears who, yes, they're a talented team. They've added some talent. They added talent last year. They added talent through trading for Montez Sweat. But I think the Bears, you can make a pretty good argument, still need more talent. They still need to surround their guys with more talent. They still need to surround whatever rookie quarterback they get with more talent. And, yes, surrounding him, giving him a star-wide receiver who they draft in the top ten would probably be very helpful as well. But they have DJ Moore. They have Keenan Allen. And if they trade down from nine down to, you know, Maybe where the 49ers are. If the 49ers have two first round picks, you don't think that gets you into the top 10, especially if they trade with somebody like the Steelers, pick 20 and pick 31. Maybe that gets you into the top 10, man. And that gets you a guy like Odunes or Neighbors that maybe it's like, hey, we get to add a real star player. And, you know, that's maybe a solid replacement for Brandon Ayuk. So I get that. Um, so maybe I, that's why I think maybe Buffalo's pick just isn't strong enough to get the deal done. Detroit's another option that gets you know thrown out there. But again, I think everybody makes the connection of, yeah, sure, they're going to trade him to Detroit. They just played Detroit in the NFC Championship game and almost lost. Yes, let's give Detroit more weaponry. Listen, I think it would be a great move. Add, add Ayuk to that receiving core because they don't have really a downfield outside threat. But I, again, I think when, you know, to, to run those dig routes for him. But, uh, you know, I don't think the 49ers are going to be overly induced to trade Ayuk to the team that almost beat them in the NFC Championship game and almost cost them going to the Super Bowl. So I don't think that's going to be in. But, you know, Detroit does have pick 29, 61, 73. Uh, you know, I think those are options. I think, you know, they, 
if they were desperate to get rid of Ayuk, sure, trade him to the Detroit Lions. If, if if he was in trouble and you're like, ah, we don't want to keep him anymore, and like he's just that much of a head case, it doesn't sound like Ayuk's a head case. It sounds like he wants to get paid. So I don't see uh, Detroit being the option. I think it's probably going to maybe be the Jags. Jags doesn't get talked about enough, but Jags have picked 17, 48, 96, and 114. Now, you might say 17 might be a little too spicy of a pick to trade for a wide receiver, and you know, I get that. One for one, maybe it's too much. But maybe if the Jags do a pick swap, right? Pick 17 for 31, and the Jags throw in pick 48, I think that gets you something that's equivalent of a first-round value, maybe even throw in a third-round pick next year. And now you have what's probably the equivalent of a deal you can't really turn down if you're the 49ers because now you're within striking distance of, hey, like maybe we should go up and trade for you know a, a star-wide receiver in this draft class. I think there's a lot of options here. And maybe like at 17, it puts you in the realm of being able to get a really, you know, a really good tackle. Like, you know, if you like Troy Fontenot. And maybe you can play uh, Fatanu, who you play him at guard or tackle. Or, you know, if you want to get, you know, one of the falling tackles, maybe, you know, J.C. Latham, if he's there. If you like, you know, uh, whatever your spice of, you know, tackle is, if they're looking to get a tackle in this draft class and they're like, we'll draft a couple of wide receivers on day two, maybe that's what they do with those picks. So I could see that being the potential swap that, you know, is a little bit outside the box of what people are normally thinking. The Jags, you know, wanted a receiver they wanted to bring back Ridley even after they you know added Gabe Davis and unfortunately he ended up going to the Titans I think that fixes their problem because they clearly want a wide receiver there's been calls from uh, the Jags to uh, the Bears reportedly about maybe trading up to number nine and so again like that's another team that can maybe be hey like you know we'll trade it up and we'll go ahead and get the guy and you know the Jags have the money to go ahead and cover the cost and everything and 17. 17 might be the highest pick you get in return as far as, you know, climbing up the board and trying to get maybe a star player in this draft class because this is a very deep draft class. And But the top 15 guys are different than, you know, the dudes coming at the end of the first round. If you want to get a guy like Odunes, maybe you got to find a way to, you know, climb up the draft board to get into the, the top 10, and that includes maybe trading, you know, that second rounder after you get 17 to say, hey, like, We'll trade up our two second round picks and get up into the top ten and get Odunes, and that resets our receiving contract. If Odunes is the third receiver off the board, we don't know. So, I think there's some value there. I think that that might be the one I would probably be the most inclined to do if I was the 49ers because it gets me the closest to getting you know a guy, a real dude to add to that receiving core that maybe I don't have right now. There's two other teams I really wanted to talk about because I think that they make a lot of sense. The Panthers, who have 33, 39, 65, and 101, I, I think that that's, uh, that's a move that I think can make a lot of sense for them. And and here's why. They already trade for Deontay Johnson, but he's not a heavy contract for them. They don't have a lot of cap space, but they have a lot of contracts that they can maneuver into making more cap space. So cap is not an issue here. The accounting is not an issue here. They got an owner that has a lot of cash. And if you go to him and say, hey, like, you know, again, we're trying to figure out Bryce Young's not a total turtle. You know, we want to see if he can work in the NFL. We're trying to build up around him. We added two guards in free agency. You know, maybe we trade 33 and 65 and maybe a pick next year to the 49ers to go ahead and get Brandon Ayuk. And then, you know, for the Carolina Panthers, that makes a lot of sense. You can extend Ayuk. You get a downfield threat with a range. That, you know, again, I think that's what you need to get Bryce Young. I like Deontay Johnson. I like, you know, Adam Thielen's kind of a nice elderly wide receiver to have around. But both those guys are not the biggest dudes in the world. And, you know, I, you know, Thielen's just not, you know, fast anymore. He doesn't have the jets that he can turn on anymore. And Ayuk, and uh, Deontay Johnson's not really, like, a tall dude. You need to do, and really not doing a lot of downfield stuff necessarily for you. Maybe, like, you know, out of the slot, maybe you can get him downfield, but I, I think you still need one more piece there for, you know, Young to get him, like, enough weapons to say, hey, like, this is what we have here. Like, you want to build an offense for this dude to really make him a threat. I think you got to add another wide receiver to that room. Maybe it's a rookie, but if you get him Brandon Ayuk with the money that you have available, you know, if it doesn't work out next year, you know, you find out that Bryce, Bryce Young is a total, you know, know-nothing, can't turn into anything in the NFL, 
Well, now you have an offense that looks kind of appeasable, right? If you're a quarterback who's coming around, who's maybe you're Dak Prescott, and you're like, wow, wait a second, the NFC South is still winnable. I'm leaving the Dallas Cowboys, Brandon Ayuk, Deontay Johnson, this offensive line. I kind of like it. So, you know, maybe you turn that team into maybe – maybe Bryce Young is just not it, but now you've made that, that team look a lot more uh, appeasable offensively. And, and then you kind of can fix the defense at some point. Or maybe, again, you get a high pick in the draft and you end up drafting another you know rookie quarterback down the line. So I think the Panthers make a lot of sense trading for Brandon Ayuk. The last team that makes a lot of sense is the Chargers, right? I'm, I'm sure five on its own is not on the table. But a lot of talk that they might trade down with Minnesota, right, to trade for 11 and 23. You know, if Minnesota wants to go up and get a quarterback, if there's one still there at five. So, you know, but in addition to that, even if they don't do the trade down, they still have picks 37, 69, 105, 110, 140, and they have $30 million in cap space. So there's nothing money-wise that's preventing them. You might be like, wait a second, didn't they just get rid of two receivers? I know. But think about it. Keenan Allen was old. You know, Mike Williams is old and hurt and coming off a major injury, and both of them had a lot of money tied up in their contracts, and now you get to free it up. You get a young dude. And like I said before, Ayuk is one of those dudes who hasn't been injured that much in the NFL, has been very healthy. So, I, you know, if I'm a team, I'm looking to trade for a dude. I'm looking to trade for a young dude who's 26, who has not had a big injury history, who's going to be on his second contract, who maybe you can get to the third contract and be able to extend him and keep him around, and is reliable and is developed. He's developed. He's you know taken to coaching. He's gotten to become a way better route runner. He's got really good range. He's got great ball skills. He's a good downfield threat. He's got good speed. So, you know, uh, he's got the size. He's got everything you really want in a true X receiver. And that gives you a lot of things you can do with these, you know, with some of these teams, especially if you're the Chargers and you have this new offense you're bringing in. And, like, you know, again, you really couldn't rely on Mike Williams. And Keenan Allen was getting old and really wasn't a downfield threat. He was always open, but he wasn't a downfield threat. So I think, you know, that gives the Chargers some malleability, especially even if they do trade down. They have pick 23. They just trade pick 23 to the 49ers. Maybe they trade, you know, pick 69 or 105, whatever they end up doing. They could still get an offensive lineman that they really like. They could still be able to, you know, basically manipulate the the draft table to go ahead and build up this roster and build a lot of talent for this team. Because I do think that that's going to be a key thing here. I think they want talent for the 49ers, for the, the L.A. Chargers. And then, honestly, like for the 49ers, pick 23 is pretty good. Maybe you get another pick in there, like pick 69 or pick next year as well. And that gives you something that says, okay, we don't have Ayuk anymore, but maybe we could draft a replacement. We can move up the board to get a replacement. And so, like, this is why, again, I come to the end of this saying, I don't think the 49ers move off of Brandon Ayuk. I just don't. I think he's a good player. I think he's a young player who, you know, if they extend him, they'll probably get to his third contract. He's, you know, a very key part of your offense working. Like, they did not have that kind of a guy previous to this. He's a downfield threat. He's got range. He's got good ball skills. You know, he's great in the red zone. And I think he's going to be the guy who pairs with Brock Purdy for a long time. But somebody makes you an offer you can't refuse, the equivalent of like a first rounder and possibly a second rounder. Man, I don't know, man. That's hard to turn down sometimes because being able to reset the age of your roster to make your roster younger and to be able to have the malleability of those other contracts and be able to bring in a a young dude, especially, again, this is a talented draft class. A lot of fans of A.D. Mitchell and Leggett and Brian Thomas Jr., even if you're, you know, yeah, we're all fans of the top three. But, like, most people have at least, like, three or four wide receivers in this draft class who they really like, whether it's, you know, you're a huge fan of uh, 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 Troy Franklin or Leggett or or, or, uh, the other Xavier Worthy. You know, you have a lot of good players in this draft class. I could see, you know, teams seeing the value there and going, you know, we can get really young at receiver this year. And, like, yeah, they might not be, like, year one contributors or they might take a year or two to develop but like by the time we get to year three and what these guys can be in the NFL and considering where the contracts are going like it gets you to the point where you go this makes kind of some sense that being said I really do think Ayuk stays with the 49ers it's the one it's the move that makes the most sense right 
you you got the fifth year option. You don't have to pay him right now. So if you're going to move off of anybody, I don't think it's Ayuk. I think it's other players. I think he's you know I think for him it's hey I need to you know I need to make my money, man. Like I proved myself the last two years. Extend me, and and with that, I I think they do keep him.